When I spoke about enjoying humanity a few months ago, I said that humanity is messy and marvelous. This speech involves both in a different way. Some recent bills in the state government show that humanity can be messy and marvelous. A bill that is a bill is a proposal that becomes law if it passes enough votes in different parts of the government. And the bills we're thinking about this morning continue a long trend of people in power attacking people who are different from the assumed norm. Let's first consider Senate Bill 43. The original version of SB 43 attempted to limit drag performances. And it included language that threatened groups beyond the drag community. The people who proposed and supported the bill said they were trying to protect children from overly sexualized performances. And the way the bill defined a drag performance was quite interesting. The original version said, in legalese, Drag performance means a performance in which one or more performers exhibits a gender identity that is different from the performer's gender assigned at birth using clothing, makeup, or other accessories that are traditionally worn by members of or, and are meant to exaggerate the gender identity of the performer's opposite sex. And sings, lip syncs, dances, or otherwise performs before an audience of at least two persons for entertainment, whether performed for payment or not, and that is intended to appeal to the purient interest. <laughs> the original version went on to say that such a performance would not be allowed on public property or where a child might see the performance. Countless people objected to the wording People pointed out that drag shows don't usually do what the bill sought to criminalize and that taking a child to Hooters was more extreme than taking them to a drag show. <laughs> Other objections mentioned that the language attacked the everyday lives of trans people, including non-binary trans. It even could have criminalized cisgendered women wearing pants when singing or speaking in a service like this. Because of the objections, the bill was substantially edited and then finally gutted to be much simpler and shorter. The current version proposes that an adult-oriented performance shall not take place on public property, admit any minor for attendance, or be funded in whole or in part with public funds. The current version still has some contested parts, and you can read it for yourself if you want. You can search online for Arkansas SB 43 drag. If you don't include the word drag, you might find a previous SB 43 that's very different. <laughs> some of us might not like the current version, but it's much less broad than the original. Now that we've considered SB 43, let's move on to one that seems to have even more potential effect. House Bill 1156 proposes that public schools and similar public institutions must require minors to use restrooms associated with their sexes assigned at birth, and that on overnight trips, minors must share sleeping spaces with other minors of their sexes assigned at birth. In other words, girls must, use the boy, the girl, girls must use the girls' restroom and boys must use the boys' restroom. Girls sleep in the same room and boys sleep in the same room. And I guess the assumption is that trans people don't exist. The proponents of this bill apparently want to protect children from sharing restrooms or sleeping arrangements with peers of the opposite sex. 
Oppositions are based on biology and mental health. These oppositions point out that science is not in agreement that human sex is binary, and that enforcing a binary system based on how children were sexed or gendered at birth denies the very existence of trans children and forces them into embarrassing, depressing, frightening, and dangerous situations. Just imagine the feeling of a trans girl who is forced either to use the boys' restroom or to be isolated and ridiculed when special accommodations are made, if they are made. The most recent version of the bill I found does not allow accommodations for overnight trips. Regarding this bill, Thursday's news email from NWA Equality says, the legislation violates Title IX and will waste Arkansas taxpayers' dollars trying to fight this in court. We remind Arkansas legislators that trans and gender nonconforming kids are real and they deserve safety, equal access, and belonging, and federal laws protect these kids. This bill has been slightly amended, but is still a significant issue for trans youth. The legislation has passed the House chamber and has moved to the Senate Education Committee, but it is not currently scheduled for a Senate committee hearing. So that was in the NWA Equality E! News on Thursday. However, Friday, Laura Kellums of the Arkansas Advocates for Children and Families told me in a phone call that the bill may reach the committee this coming week. A main issue here is fear. I say a main issue because there are others, but a main issue is fear. Humans tend to fear the different, the unknown, whomever and whatever might disrupt the status quo. And this is the case in how we care for trans children or refuse to do so. It seems that many in our society think trans childhood is a new phenomenon, something different and unknown, something threatening. But trans experience isn't new. The book Histories, there we go. The book Histories of the Transgender Child by Julian Gill Peterson analyzes medical records of trans children from the early 1900s. And Kit Hayam's book, Before We Were Trans, A New History of Gender, tells of centuries of trans experience. But in a status quo that insists on binary norms and relies on them for survival, our learning of history and biology can be selective, leading to the current situation succinctly explained by Catherine von Stockton in the book, The Queer Child. which says, we fear the children we would protect. What was it the hymn said? Children are real beyond the fear, the fears. Children are real beyond the lies. Whenever I speak for you, I'm not allowed to tell you how to vote. And if you're, going, if you're going to contact a representative or senator, I'm not allowed to tell you which vote you should request. But I am allowed to tell you what's happening. And I'm allowed to tell you that your action can help. A few days ago, I had a long phone conversation with Representative Nicole Clowney about SB 43 and related issues. Regarding SB 43, Representative Clowney said, this bill highlights an underlying theme of seeing LGBT people's mere existence as inherently sexual and threatening. She continued, we have bigger problems, but are spending our time legislating about a problem that doesn't exist. It is a moral panic. 
It is bullying of a tiny portion of Arkansas. It is such a small group that we are insistent on attacking. They claim these as moral wins, wins for the Christian right. It is taking this community that is certainly vibrant and beautiful and also marginalized and vulnerable and making them more that way for no good policy reason. It's about othering a community. She wasn't, she was a little hesitant about how she was wording that, and she apologized in advance if she got it a little bit wrong. I said, it's okay, I can translate. I didn't need to translate. It was said beautifully. I asked Clowney what we can do, and she told this story. When the trans health care bill went to the governor, the governor apparently hadn't met a trans person. So Clowney contacted Washington County Justice of the, of the Peace, Evelyn Rio Stafford, and Stafford and an 18-year-old trans woman met with the governor for an hour. After getting to know a trans person, the governor vetoed the bill. After telling me that encouraging story, Representative Clowney told me a few things we can do. The first, one, the first one can be hard. She said that we can show our humanity to political leaders by showing up to committee meetings and sharing our stories. Letting them know that trans people exist and are real and are no normal people. This can be helpful, but difficult for some. And we acknowledge that marginalized groups have no obligation to teach the powerful. Members of dominant groups have an obligation to learn about marginalized experiences and perspectives without adding to the burden already experienced by the marginalized. The burden is on the privileged. Clowney suggested three other actions. First, we can call the House to leave a message for Representative X and say, vote no or yes on Bill Blank. <clears throat> the message can be short and simple. Of course, it also should be respectful. The person answering the phone is not a representative. And then the person who answers the phone puts a note on the representative's desk, and a pile of notes is a helpful visual for a representative. She also said to focus first on committee members when a bill is at that phase because a bill is easiest to stop when it's in committee. Second, although calling helps, showing up in person is most effective. Going to committee meetings and sharing our thoughts. Of course, for various reasons, many people can't do that. Third, be a resource for people who may not understand the issues. I asked Representative Clowney what she would say to us if she could be here, especially to those of us most personally affected by the recent onslaught of bills. She said, I am so sorry to anyone who feels like they don't belong here because they do. This won't be forever. And I'm so sorry that it is now. Sometimes we might get discouraged and think nothing we can do, nothing, and think that nothing we do can accomplish anything. And that may at times be true in specific situations and with specific events. But the accumulation of efforts can eventually accomplish good or at least minimize harm. The story of SB 43 shows this. Our next hymn is about building a new way. In partnership with others, we've been doing that and we are doing it. And I encourage us to continue building a new way, a way of love, peace, freedom, 
and acceptance, a way that refuses to other people because of our differences, a way that insists on embracing and celebrating such a wide expanse of identities and experiences. Indeed, humanity can be messy and marvelous. Let's do our parts to make it more marvelous. Jordan. Thank you.